You know, back when I first started using Obsidian, I saw tables, but I tried using them and it was so frustrating and so non-intuitive that I basically wrote it off forever and I got along just fine without having to use a single table for years. And then eventually I figured, you know, maybe there are some times where this is useful and I should just learn how to deal with it. And then recently there was a update relatively quiet that completely transformed tables into an incredibly useful tool that is simple and easy to use. Maybe it's not a delight, but it's still easy enough for somebody like me to use. So I'm gonna show you how they work and then what the update did that made it work so much better and then a plugin that will take it to the next level. Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Pritchard from iCanReadMinds.com. I'm a solopreneur, I'm an artist, a writer, a mentalist, performer, speaker, author, all sorts of stuff, and I make it all work because I use Obsidian to hold all of my thoughts and I've used it so much that that's why I started making videos so that I could remember what I did way back when I was doing that thing that I need to do again. So I make these videos hopefully for you to get some use out of as well. I'm not a coder, I'm not highly technical. So these are aimed at uh, being beginner friendly uh, into intermediate. So if you have any questions about how we got to where we are in this video, I have an entire playlist of Obsidian walkthroughs that I've made for all kinds of stuff. So hopefully you'll find that useful. Now, we are diving into tables because if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm a um, kind of a mind map person. I like putting ideas anywhere that they need to be and then having the freedom to move them around and organize them that way. And then when I'm writing, it's usually in... Uh, kind of a straightforward format, but there are some times when I need information presented in in rows and columns without having to go to a spreadsheet to do this. Um, now, Excel and spreadsheets are fantastic for formulas and computing and crunching numbers. And while you can technically do that with tables as they exist right now, that is going to be way beyond the scope of this video. So I want to, again, just focus on how to use it as you might in a day-to-day -day case and demystify how in the world these are supposed to work in Markdown. So that's what I want to get into first. And welcome to the screen share. We are in the uh, YouTube demo vault, and it's pretty much exactly how I left it from the previous video. Uh, so if you've been watching them in sequence, you are caught up. I haven't changed anything. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and create a new note and call it table example. And in order to use a table, you need to use the pipe. I think that's what that's called, is the pipe character. It's right above return on my MacBook keyboard shift uh, slash equals the vertical pipe. So then just for example's sake, let's say we want to track a uh, workout. So we would say the exercise is there. And then the reps is here, hit enter. And then these, the colon dash 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 colon uh, is how you tell the table where to align the text. A colon on each side means it's going to be centered. And then a colon just on the left means that it would be left adjusted or justified and then a colon on the right means it would be over to the right. So that's a, a handy tip there. And when you hit that next pipe, it automatically will understand, oh, okay, this is supposed to be a table, and it will autofill that in for you. So then you can use your arrow keys to maneuver around 
and reps didn't show up to begin with, which I, I don't know why, but there you go. That's the quirk and personality of Obsidian. But we've got reps up here and exercise over here, and you can use your arrow keys, but you could also use tab to cycle through. It starts in the upper left-hand corner and then goes right. When it hits the end, it goes down and to the left, kind of like a typewriter does. So you could hit tab and tab and tab. There was no next row, so it realized, okay, we should probably put one in. So shift enter. Well, no, shift tab goes backwards. That's what I was trying to say. So let's say we do push-ups and then pull-ups and sprints, jumping jacks, whatever, right? So this is the, the default exercise that we're going to be doing. Now, what's cool is you could store this as a template and then use the command palette to put this into uh, any note, or you can put this as part of your daily note if you uh, work out every day, or if you're handy with Templater, you can do conditional logic based on what day of the week it is, and that is beyond me. I don't even mess with that. So what I do is I keep a workout tracker like this as a template, and then use the command palette to uh, go to template, insert template, name of my workout, which in this example would be table example. But anyway, you've got your own reason to use the tables. So this is kind of how, how you use tables. And we could say that we did 10 reps and 20 reps or 30 and 5 minutes and whatever we did, 90 seconds of those. Okay, so that is the, the basic use of tables. And I want to show you how I used to change things because check this out. Um, as we're here, I'm like, okay, we've got the exercise and we've got the reps, but you know what? I forgot to, um, I forgot to add an extra column. And if I hit tab, it just goes down to the next row. So this is how I used to do it. If you aren't an idiot like me, then enjoy laughing. But this is how I used to how I used to do this, which is I would go to source mode to view the actual code and then add in, we'll say notes. And then I would have to add in an extra one of those and then an extra one of these and another vertical, and another vertical, and another vertical, and another vertical. Then when I unselect source mode, I would have that next notes and say, these felt great, felt like dying, whatever. Puked a lot. All right, so now we've got the exercise, the reps, and the notes, and that's it. So that's how I would used to use it, and you can see why it's kind of clunky. And I was just like, this, this isn't really an ideal thing for me to use. But then, along the way, Tables has become so much easier to use, and there was a, a just a split second where it showed up because... If I wanted to add another column, if I mouse over, it activates the add column after. And now, just something else to track. So it's, it's way easier to make a new column. And you can add a new row that way. And you could add new rows by hitting enter. So now it's really easy using your cursor to add a column or add a row that way. And then they decided to take it up a notch because that wasn't cool enough. What if you accidentally um, missed 
mislabeled something or you go, you know what, I want to do jumping jacks after whatever. Well, it's it's easy now to kind of highlight that. But check this out. On the left hand side, the hand comes up and now you can click and drag the row around. So now you can just quickly reconfigure everything and it works for columns as well. So if you want to change the sequence of your columns, that's cool. If you want to change the rows, that's cool too. And this is just stock. This is how it comes now, which is fantastic, right? So this is just how it works. No extra plugins to it at all. But now it is crazy useful. And now it's not quite as frustrating to do what I want to do with it. But if you do want to take it up uh, another notch, now let's look at the plugin. And that is over here in Community Plugins, Browse Community Plugins, and it is the third most installed plugin. So it's it's pretty darn good. So you click on it, click install, and then enable, and voila. As per usual, there are um, options and settings here. Pretty simple. Um, you'll be able to mess around with this um, however you like. Turn it off, see if you like it, leave it off. If you turn it off and you don't like how it behaves, then turn it back on. Easy to experiment, very low stakes. But what happens here, uh, nothing too obvious, except over here on the left-hand side, there's an icon that says Advanced Tables Toolbar. And if you click that, on the left, over on the right, up here, along with all the other elements, uh, you'll see, right, you can scroll left and right, so if you see your calendar, but you don't see the advanced table stuff, you might be able to scroll sideways and advanced tables will be over here. So now when you highlight a column, you can change the justification of the whole thing. So instead of having to go into source mode and then mess with the, the colon dash 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 and do that, well, you can now just do these elements and oh no it's the whole column i was mistaken strike that reverse it all right anyway uh now that we've got the drag and drop this isn't quite so um necessary but basically you can move the rows this way and you can move the columns left and right by clicking a button which is kind of cool or you can insert a row above, which is nice. So if you are here and you go, okay, I want to insert a row above, you can do that there. Or if you want to insert a column, or if you want to re remove a row, say, okay, I didn't actually need that. Let me delete that row. Or if you are in this column and you want to add a column there, you're like, oh, I didn't actually want that. You can delete that there too. And then you can sort these by alphabet A to B, or A to Z, Z to A. And then the functions, you can, uh, this is way more advanced than, than this video should ever get. But basically the idea is that you can write a function below the table. And then when you click that button, it will compute that formula. It would evaluate whatever it is that you asked it to do. Um, I have messed with that for hours and realized that I'm just not going to use tables that way. But maybe you are a table guru and it works great for you. Awesome. But I don't think I'm ever going to use that. If, if I do want to do some kind of table-like computation, I'm going to use that plugin numerals, which I have a video about as well. 
So that is more my speed. But then you could also export your table as a CSV. So if you are keeping track of email addresses and name and company and a role at the company, what's their job, um, what's their title, you can kind of prep your email sequence here. And uh, then there's help. So if you want to kind of dig into using this more effectively, you can go check that out. But that's it, right? There's the, the simple way that I was using it for, for a long time. Then there were the updates on uh, just the stock version of tables. And then this advanced tables that gives you a visual on how to do a lot of the stuff that you can do now already the way that it comes out of the box. So that's what I wanted to show you. And uh, I've got a couple things to run by you. So let's get back to the good camera. So there you have it. A really cool way to use Obsidian and the plugin like I showed you is fantastic. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please uh, drop them below this video. I would love to know what you would like to hear about next. And if you made it this far, one, I'm impressed. And two, thank you very much for still being here. Let me know that you're here by giving it a thumbs up. That'll let me know that you'll like more stuff like this. And it tells YouTube that other people might benefit from seeing this video too. And I would love to invite you to join my newsletter, The Persuasive Professional. The whole goal is to help artists, creators, writers, designers, solopreneurs, business owners, salespeople, anybody that would benefit from being more persuasive. That's the whole goal of the newsletter. Basically, I would love to help you make a better living off of what is inside your head and in your exocortex, which is what I like to call obsidian. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and sign up. Go to ICanReadMinds.com and then from there you'll be able to find the newsletter. When you do sign up, I'll teach you a mind reading trick that is the format for learning how to be a better communicator. And I will send you to the list of all the tools that I'm using to shoot this video and to create a lot of the stuff that I do for clients and professional work and my own interests on the side and, and everything else. So I think that would be super helpful to you. And if you think so too, go ahead, sign up and I will see you basically every weekday when I share stories from the road and insights gained from um, more than 10, 15 years doing this kind of stuff full time. So see you on the inside. That's it for this video. As always, remember, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.